Who is the aggressor? In recent years and in recent days, Iran has been portrayed as an aggressor and is blamed for various conflicts and tensions in the Middle East. A closer examination, however, reveals an entirely different narrative. Firstly, Iran put simply does not have a modern history of invading other nations. Unlike some of its neighbours, including Israel, Iran has refrained from launching aggressive military campaigns beyond its borders. This commitment to non-aggression contrasts sharply with the actions of other regional powers. Despite Western mainstream media, propaganda, the recent strikes on Israel were not an unprovoked attack but a response to Israel's aggressive assault on Iran's consulate in Syria, which killed several people. What would Britain do if a hostile nation flattened one of our consulates? Well, we would take, you know, we would take the very strong action. And Iran would say that that's what they did? Well, what they did, as I said, was a so massive they, attack. So yeah, they were right think... to respond, but they... Over Israel's bombing of the Iranian embassy is unprecedented, not least because most civilised nations understand that embassies full of diplomats and civilians should never be targets and are simply off limits. Israel breaking international law and violating international norms is of course nothing new, but must be condemned. Had Iran bombed another country's embassy, we can only speculate as to how different the West's response would be. Some have said it might have even triggered an all-out war. Western media is accusing Iran of escalating tensions, but the plain reality is that Israel's actions are endangering the entire region and beyond. While retaliatory, Iran's response to Israel's attack on its embassy was executed with military precision, achieving its objectives, demonstrating the country's military capabilities. No fatalities occurred as a result of the operation. Unlike Israel, which kills thousands of civilians, Iran only targeted military sites and locations. Despite this, mainstream media is working hard to suggest Iran is to blame, has failed in its objectives, when in fact its response actually reaffirms that the country is a serious regional player not to be pushed around. Unlike Israel, Iran clearly and objectively does not desire to drag the world into a new world war. Unlike Benjamin Netanyahu, who seeks to provoke the United States into attacking Iran, not least to save his own political position. This irresponsible leadership and Netanyahu's attempts to consolidate power is why many Israelis wanted him gone prior to October the 7th. The only thing more dangerous than Israel is the complicity of Western media and politicians in supporting this madness. Their willingness to back Israel in its campaign of genocide against the Palestinians and their willingness to stand back while Israel violates any semblance of international law is shameful. If any other country behaved as Israel does, we might possibly see an international alliance step in to stop it, along with sanctions imposed. Iran's recent strikes on Israel, while condemned by some, must be viewed through the rational lens of self-defense and justifiable retaliation against aggression. Iran's strong but measured actions are a counterweight to Israel, which is a genocidal danger to the Palestinians, a danger to the wider region, and world potential peace. This doesn't mean that Iran should never be criticised, but it does mean that all countries, including Israel, must be held equally accountable to the law. The double standards of our media and politicians is why they are losing relevance and why increasing numbers of people no longer take their words seriously or watch their coverage. Iran is not the aggressor and is acting as any rational country would in responding to Israel. Challenging portrayals of Iran is vitally important if we are serious about future stability in the region and wider world.